Hi, everybody. So uh, first of all, thank you so much for assembling the information for today into the presentation um, that, you, that you posted. Um, you notice that this particular this particular chapter is almost kind of like a summary of everything. And that was Alexander's effort to make sure that people were seeing that the kind of the global consideration or the sum of all the parts was really necessary to coalesce into a discursive kind of quality. And that is why, it, as Danny said, is aptly titled The New Jim Crow, right? It was to summarize all of these investigations, see how they're connected, to create an overall picture. And you did some good work with that. Um, the, the information itself, much in, the, much in the vein that the chapter is intending, is to somehow create kind of a holistic way of assembling the previous four chapters into something narrative, something um, progressive, something that kind of has us see the, the entire picture. And in many places in this presentation, you, you did that. What it requires is to be extemporaneous, meaning that you riff beyond the language of the chapter to really kind of understand how it fits into the whole scheme of things. Um, and so um, I'll just go through each of you and then also provide general kind of comments in between. Danny, uh, I think you really embodied that extemporaneous quality uh, you, because you made some terrific parallels from the information in the chapter and then brought it into other experiences to kind of create relationships to the, the chapter ideas. And you had really good explanations um, in your section. And that was strategic because you began the, the presentation. And so we're able to immediately see how it relates to kind of, um, you know, the broader scheme of things. Jenny, you did a good job explaining the three phases as well. And that obviously is a really vital section of the chapter because it very kind of clearly delineates how historically we have been creating variations of new, you know, of Jim Crow. Um, and so um, thanks for making that clear. Um, Sihita, you did a good job with, with your section of the mapping parallels in terms of creating emphasis, um, where there, you kind of highlighted some areas that really needed um, to be prioritized in the overall scheme of things. And, um, and the, the language obviously was clear. I think it would help in this case to provide some illustrations and examples to bring these parallels to life a little bit. I would actually say that about all of you um, in general, that I think we need a little bit more illustrative material um, to kind of say like, for example, you know, we see this, um, you know, um, moment in history. I mean, you could even think about Ahmad Arbery or, um, oh goodness, there's so many examples where you could illustrate where in the phase um, that particular moment, um, that particular news story could, for example, exemplify um, the ideas, right? Dylan, you had a nice explanation of the ideas that you were purporting in your own words as well. Um, one thing I would, I would advise though is to expand the nuance of rationale, especially when in that section, black people saved the justice system. Um, that would, uh, that I think requires a little bit more complex language. Um, there were a couple times you began to essentialize, meaning, you know, like getting people out of the ghetto, you know, the, you know, or living a better life or being better people. And it's like, well, how much of it is exactly that? And how much of it is the perception of the dominant culture um, impressing that they are not good people, right? So we have to be careful around that. We can't use overly simplified language. And I know that it, you know, this is just one of the, the areas that we all need to expand in, but I just wanted to point that out, um, that we want to avoid that. Um, but I do think that the examination of the rhetoric of, of culture that you mentioned is, is really strong. 
And we have to always think about that rhetoric. You know, for example, you know, just to use another one as parallel to, you know, the criminal um, versus, you know, or the black criminal who, who engages in, let's say, a drug charge versus the wayward white kid who, oh, just kind of fucked up for a moment, right? Let's give him a chance. You know, he just went wayward, um, which is what happens a lot of times with these with, you know, white kids committing a drug offense as opposed to the kind of presumed criminality of the black kid that um, is tried for a drug possession. Um, A great parallel to that, I think, would be, you know, in the age of terror, right? When an Arab person or a Muslim person um, commits an act of violence, it is an act of terror. When a white kid does it, if you look at our our news media, it becomes a mental health issue. And so that would be an example of racialized rhetoric. Um, And again, the more that we have nuance in the explanation um, with examples, with parallels, with our own experiences, we then begin to complicate the subject matter in a way that I think is really necessary. Another place that we could use more nuance is in the explanation of black support for crime. Um, you know, again, that needs to be that needs to be fully examined um, and clarified because it is a desire that is built upon a dominant hegemonic structure, right? Where black folks, kind of like what Dylan said, black folks are also trying to adhere to a white society, so they will adopt the same kind of um, language to to almost create a sense of camaraderie, right? Especially because, of course, no one wants crime, um, but it is fueled from a different kind of motivation. And, you know, for us to really kind of understand that, you know, that would be useful. Just overall, um, because you all did a terrific job at providing language to summarize all of these ideas. And, you know, it's a summary of kind of a summary, right? Um, But again, really pool your resources of experience and observations, Um, providing examples, providing illustrations for these things, making it lived a little bit more, because otherwise it'll just be information and it won't necessarily be something that could potentially engage in a critical dialogue or have your colleagues go, huh, I never thought of it that way before, right? And that's, of course, what we want to do. Um, your questions are really interesting, um, of all four, you know, some of them, of course, and this kind of makes sense that we're coming to the end of the, of the book are these ideas surrounding like what efforts have we taken to unlock the metaphorical birdcage and what further efforts should be made based on the information that we have. I think that's really important. I, I'm going to pose that question to the groups in the small group chats, um, this week. Another question, how can we help those in the ghetto escape poverty? Again, this is an interesting question, obviously, but who is the we, right? Um, are, let's kind of engage in nuance with this. Um, is it just about helping those in the ghetto escape poverty? Can we do that? Is it something that we do in an applied way or are we talking about systemic structural change, right? Um, let, let's word our questions in a way that kind of gets to the heart of what we really want to ask. Um, The third one, what laws could be implemented to reduce mass incarceration? It's a big question, but it's a good one, right? And so this becomes another um, consideration of, you know, do we look at um, systemic change in the criminal justice system? Do we change particular um, policies with police um, governance? Do we, um, do we enact economic laws? I mean, right? So these are all things that could be final um, paper topics. Um, the fourth question, are there any parallels between mass incarceration and slavery or Jim Crow laws and slavery? I mean, I, I mean, yes, that we could go deeper with those, but it seemed like, you know, the new Jim Crow kind of talks about that as a whole. So isn't that kind of the premise of the entire book? Um, but, 
I, I would be curious as to like what specifically um, that that question is intended to mean. So maybe maybe you all kind of plumb the depths of that and attenuate it to something that's a little bit more specific to what it is that you seek um, with that question. Overall, though, um, a great summary of a summary, and it will certainly fuel the small group discussions that we start later today and tomorrow. Thanks, y'all.